So good afternoon. Uh, this is Li Chang Wang, an associate professor and grad coordinator in the Department of Computer Science. I lead the Big Data Lab in Computer Science. Uh, my research area include uh, big data analytics and privacy, uh, machine learning, and a parallel system and a software uh, reliability. Uh, my research has been supported by multiple NSF grounds and uh, ORR, Army, Air Force, and uh, industry um, contracts, as well as several UCF uh, in, uh, internal grounds. Uh, in this fall semester, I'm teaching two courses. Uh, artificial intelligence is a very popular undergraduate course. Uh, there are around 250 students in my class. Uh, another class I'm teaching is a parallel and cloud computing, which is a uh, graduate level uh, courses for the data analytics master students. Um, I'm currently advising uh, 10 PhD students as well as several undergraduate students for research. Uh, today, you know, I will introduce several deep learning technology we developed recently, uh, which could be used to improve uh, conventional physical uh, data-driven models. Uh, the spread of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic is a serious threat to public health and our daily life. Uh, to effectively battle against COVID-19 and other uh, infectious disease, it's critical to understand their transmission pattern and model them accurately. Um, conventional uh, epidemiological model cannot accurately describe uh, the complex transmission of dynamics, especially for COVID-19. Uh, even if the refined SIR or SER model may be heard about, so those models show uh, some effectiveness in disease transmission modeling, but uh, those models often require long-term and large accumulated data to derive a precise initial and boundary conditions. Uh, to address this problem, uh, we propose a new approach we call uh, the black box knowledge uh, distillation to model epidemiological uh, transmission dynamics. Uh, first, we prepare a comprehensive simulation system as a black box uh, teacher model. Our objective is to try to accurate uh, distill this black box teacher model to a smaller uh, deep neural network. So we call it a student uh, neural network. Uh, this neural network is expected to reduce complexity yet keep accuracy. To re achieve this goal, and we collect a set of uh, observation sequence to query uh, the teacher model. And uh, so then we try to acquire the projection uh, sequence as knowledge. So after we get the knowledge, so those knowledge are the training data. And with those observation projection pairs, and we can train a student a deeper neural network as a compressed version. Uh, so this student neural network uh, usually will mimic the teacher uh, neural network and the performance uh, will be very similar. So in our approach to improve accuracy and uh, efficiency, and we propose a new approach we named the sequence mix-up. So to reduce, uh, this approach is to reduce the model queries and uh, increase training data uh, quantity, quality, and uh, diversity. So this approach can not only handle uh, COVID-19 prediction, but also could be uh, useful to improve uh, the conventional physical uh, data-driven model uh, that's widely uh, in lots of engineering field. Uh, similar to this COVID-19 case, and if the mixture physical data-driven model uh, work, and then uh, we could have a good chance to distill the knowledge into a small uh, neural network 
so which works more efficiently and even has better performance than the teacher mixture model. Um, so here, and uh, we show uh, the results, okay, on the uh, top right corner. And our COVID-19 prediction result based on this approach uh, is uh, pretty accurate uh, as shown here. And the result has been reported by a few uh, local media. And we show uh, the more result uh, in this uh, web link if you are interested. So uh, roughly speaking, you know, if anybody is interested about the approach uh, using the black box knowledge simulation for the physical data driven models. And so here, you know, we show uh, example and maybe, you know, we can discuss more details offline if anybody is interested. Uh, next, I would like to introduce another application about black box uh, knowledge uh, distillation. So it is based on our paper published on um, this year's uh, CVPR. And here, uh, same as before, uh, we assume there's a black box teacher model. And so we would like to distill uh, the knowledge and then train a student model. So this is quite useful when the details of teacher model, oh sorry. When the, uh, so this approach is, um, yeah, it's useful. And when the details of teacher model are not available, and we would like to mimic the behavior uh, in the student neural network. So in the, this research, and we have three research goals. The first goal is try to accurately distill the teacher model. And the second, we would like to reduce the query number to the teacher model and because each query is not a free lunch uh, because the query may uh, involve high computation cost. Um, or maybe, you know, in the real world, the teacher model doesn't allow too many queries. Uh, the third goal is uh, we try to optimize the approach if uh, original data per query uh, is very limited. To achieve those research goal, and we propose two approach. The first approach we call the mix up. Uh, we already introduced this idea in the previous slides and the mix up generate a synthetic image by a convex combination uh, of two images and with the different coefficient. Uh, the second approach we call the active uh, data selection. Uh, intuitively given an input the student uh, network report least, if the student network report least confidence, and we can use those data to query uh, the teacher model, uh, this way may help us gain more uh, tricky knowledge from the teacher model. Uh, in the COVID-19 project, we didn't use this kind of the active uh, data selection technique because uh, the revised data mix already give us enough training data set to train the student model. So in summary, and uh, so if the teacher model is complex, and uh, so this active data selection uh, could help a lot to help us okay, to query the teacher model. And uh, so we get better quality of training data and uh, so we can train the student model better. So in uh, today, you know, I'm talk several related uh, technology. Okay. So besides the knowledge uh, distillation, uh, transfer learning and meta learning are also very useful techniques to help train deep neural network uh, deep neural network models. The transfer learning is mainly used when the training data is very limited, but we have pre-trained model uh, to refer. So. For the transfer learning, uh, we are working on a project to measure the transferability of the pre-trained model. And then we can help a user to choose a better uh, pre-trained model. So that's ongoing work and we didn't show in these uh, slides. For meta-learning, we are also uh, developing a lazy um, meta-learning approach and to improve the meta-learning performance and if anybody interest in such kind of technology about transfer learning, meta learning, and we can talk details 
uh, maybe offline. So today, um, so I will, uh, for example, talk about uh, the combination of transfer learning and meta learning. So in this approach, we uh, give it a name called meta transfer learning. Uh, we apply this meta transfer learning to um, a domain application uh, in a two way prediction. Uh, this is a collaborative uh, work with Dr. Da Zhong Wu uh, in mechanical engineering. Uh, recall the regular transfer learning consists of two phases. Okay, so we have the domain, um, source domain training, and the target domain training. Okay, so uh, usually, and for the transfer learning, we pre train a model on the source domain and then tune it on the source uh, target domain. So for the source domain training, and uh, it will not see the target domain data. So that's a regular way. Uh, in our approach, in the proposed meta transfer learning, we blend, we mixed the source and the target domain training in the first phase to generate an optimized uh, pre-trained model. And then we tune it using uh, the target model training data uh, in the second phase. So this approach is a combination of the transfer learning and the meta learning. So on this slide, uh, we show a little more details and here we blend the two, um, and that's the first phase, we blend the meta learning and the transfer learning. And then that's the second phase, uh, we use the target data for the, uh, to fine tuning uh, the model. Okay, so uh, yeah, this approach uh, we find, you know, it's pretty, uh, you know, works very well for the two wear prediction. And I believe, you know, maybe that's also useful to many other engineering uh, domains. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, I talk about another project we recently work on uh, called uh, Reinforced Learning. Uh, this project uses Reinforced Learning to learn a model to automatically manage computing resources uh, like a managed computing cluster. So this technique, um, we believe, you know, can also be used in a broader area for scheduling. Um, this work is based on the simulation of computing cluster um, in every episode um, we gather the resource uh, we gather uh, resource management actions because you know we do the simulation and we can get a lot of actions and uh, so we sing uh, those information uh, into the knowledge replay buffer and at the end of um, the each ep episode. So an action taken is will be evaluated and their value will be uh, supplemented to the corresponding item in the knowledge uh, replay buffer. Okay, so in this way, we will accumulate more and more knowledge in the replay buffer. And if there enough knowledge accumulated in the knowledge replay buffer, and we can conduct a neural network uh, training process and so we randomly uh, select samples from the knowledge replace buffer and uh, train uh, the neural network. Okay, here we show in a general uh, idea. So I believe, you know, such kind of uh, the uh, reinforced learning experience maybe, you know, can also help some uh, like engineering uh, problems. Uh, to conclude uh, my talk, so, uh, Mainly, you know, we talk about several technology uh, in deep learning. Uh, the first technology we mentioned is the knowledge uh, distillation with mix up for physical uh, data driven models. Uh, the second topic we mentioned about uh, uh, that's a new approach we call the meta transfer learning by combining uh, meta learning and transfer learning. So then we talk about um, uh, you know, a work we work on the reinforced learning. So today, you know, I don't have too much uh, time. Uh, to talk about the big data privacy, you know, actually we are working on a project um, about the data privacy. So in this data privacy, uh, we use the GAN model. Okay, maybe somebody heard about, you know, it's also based on the, uh, the deep neural network. Okay, so the GAN model, we train a generator and a discriminator and a generator help us to uh, generate the 
the faked data, and we can use those faked data to totally replace original data and to hide, uh, protect the privacy. Okay, so that's another uh, yeah project. You know, we 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 are working on you know a bunch of uh, other projects about the deep learning and include uh, the distributed machine learning, uh, federated machine learning, and uh, so we are also apply uh, the deep neural network technology to software. And we try to detect software uh, bugs and I try to fix the software problem or even uh, based on the query and we try to generate the code uh, based on the natural language uh, query. So yeah, that's a bunch of other projects uh, we are working on. Uh, yeah, we don't have time to cover in every project today. So yeah, so uh, the potential application domain for the several technology uh, I introduced uh, today, it could be applied to, you know, many different engineering areas. Okay. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, that's all. No, thanks the support for several.